Hello again, it's me, Vlad. We have already discussed work and today we discuss mechanical energy, power and efficiency. If a body is lifted above the ground, it has gravitational potential energy or GPE. Gravitational potential energy is equal to mass multiplied by gravitational field strength and multiplied by height above the ground or simply mgh gpe is equal to m times g times h for example a brick of mass 4 kilograms is 12 meters above the ground how much gravitational potential energy does it have? Well, using the formula, GPE is equal mass times gravitational field strength, which we can take to be 10 newtons per kilogram, and H, which is 12 meters. So it's 4 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 10, which gives us 480 joules. Now, the brick has 480 joules of potential energy. If we let go of the brick, the height decreases. So the gravitational potential energy also decreases. So what is this energy is converted into? Well, gravitational potential energy as the brick falls down is converted to kinetic energy of the brick. When a body is moving, we say it has kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is equal to one half times the mass of the body times velocity squared. So with our brick, the 480 joules of gravitational potential energy has converted into kinetic energy. Knowing the mass, we can calculate the speed. So for our brick, the kinetic energy is 480 joules. Mass of the brick was 4 kilograms. And we need to calculate the velocity. So rearranging this formula to make v squared the subject. So v squared is equal to 2 times kinetic energy divided by the mass. So v squared, oh, here it is. So v squared is 240, that is v equals approximately 15.5 meters per second. So the brick, just before hitting the ground, has 480 joules of kinetic energy and a speed of approximately 15.5 meters per second. Let's calculate the kinetic energy of a bullet, which has a mass of 150 grams and it is traveling at a speed of 400 meters per second. So, applying the formula, kinetic energy is equal to one half mass times velocity squared. Mass is 0 0.15 kilograms, yes, because we use kilograms, not grams, and multiplied by 400 squared. And that gives us approximately 12,000 joules. Another thing we'll be discussing today is total energy. Well, total energy is simply gravitational potential energy plus kinetic energy. Well, the law of conservation of mechanical energy states that total energy remains constant. What does it mean? Well, imagine you're throwing a ball of mass 2 kilograms with a velocity of 10 meters per second. At first it has kinetic energy. Kinetic energy of the ball is equal to 1 half mv squared, so it's 1 half multiplied by 2 multiplied by 10 squared, which gives you 100 joules. Gravitational potential energy, since the ball is near the ground, is zero. So potential energy is zero joules. When the ball reaches the maximum height, the kinetic energy is zero. 
because the ball has stopped. The potential energy, on the other hand, is equal to 100 joules because the total energy remains constant. Halfway down, the ball has half the maximum potential energy. So the potential energy of the ball is 50 joules and the kinetic energy also has to be 50 joules. The total energy here, total energy, is equal to 100 plus 0. It's 100 joules. 100 joules, total energy. And here, total energy is once again 100 joules. So, total energy remains constant. It does not change. Of course, in the previous example, we have to say that the air resistance is negligible. Otherwise, energy would be lost due to heat and total energy would not be conserved. But let's go back to the brick. Anyway, why does it hurt being hit by a brick? Well, one would say that there's gravitational pull acting on the brick. Yes, but it's the same if the brick is 5 meters above your head and it's 10 centimeters above your head. But why do these two bricks feel differently? That's because this brick has more gravitational potential energy than this one. And this gravitational potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. And the more kinetic energy the brick has, the harder it hits you. Your head, on the other hand, changes the kinetic energy of the brick. Another important concept we will be discussing today is power. Well, power is simply the rate of energy transfer. But the amount of energy transferred is work. So it's the rate of work. Or simply, power is the energy divided by time. Power is measured in watts. Energy is joules and time is seconds, so we can say that a watt is joule per second. Imagine a car moving along the road with speed V. The engine provides a pushing force F. Well, of course, if the car is moving with constant velocity, this pushing force is equal to the resistive forces on the car, according to Newton's first law. But let's consider the force from the engine and let's link it to power. Well, power is work divided by time. So let's write that down. Power is work divided by time. But work, as we know, is force multiplied by distance. Force multiplied by distance divided by time. And distance divided by time is speed. So force multiplied by speed. So another formula for power, P is equal to FV. If the speed is constant and the force is constant, that's very important. The last thing I want to discuss with you today is efficiency. Let's look at this example. This is a light bulb. When it works, the total electric energy input is 100 watts. So 100 joules of electrical energy per second goes into the light bulb. This energy is then dissipated as light and heat. Well, if we are speaking of an electric light bulb, we don't think that heat is useful. We don't really use it to heat something up. So, we re refer to heat as wasted energy, and that's about 95 watts of waste. The useful output is just about 5 watts. The useful uh, light energy is 5 watts. So, we can say that this light bulb is only 5% efficient. So, what does efficiency mean? Well, efficiency is defined as useful energy or power output divided by the total energy or power input. 
In this case, it's 5, the useful output, divided by the total input, which is 100. 5 divided by 100 is 5%. So this light bulb is 5% efficient. Okay. Whenever we have energy transformed from one form into another, some energy is inevitably lost as heat. And this heat cannot be used to do something useful. For example, when the wires in an electric circuit get hot, you cannot use this heat to do something useful. This is called energy degradation. So the energy is conserved, but it becomes useless. I hope this video was efficient for you. Thank you. Goodbye.